okay good morning students uh, today we will look at uh, this optimization methods for neural networks what do you mean by optimization method when you are uh, learning uh, when the model is learning uh, the model okay the model is uh, trying to learn the weights all right when it is trying to learn the weights it can be represented in this form uh there is an algorithm right by back propagation algorithm so it can it, it, that that uh, optimize this learning you know learning can be denoted learning can be denoted in this bowl form okay in the form of this bowl and then suppose if the model weights are here some if the model weights are here our uh, weights that will yield proper results are here so what the model has to do model has to uh, change its weights such that model will uh, somehow reach this position when it comes to this position it implies that Uh, the model has reached its best this optimization is nothing but having and giving the best okay so when it reaches here it achieved uh, its highest uh, uh, accuracy or performance whatever performance metric you are measuring it has achieved the highest one suppose a student is there a student uh, Uh, in few subjects, students uh, can never score hundred because hundred uh, marks are never allotted to students for few subjects. You know, for few courses, this is not allotted. So then, what uh, um, what will be the optimized or best uh, marks that a student can obtain? Perhaps ninety uh, nine. okay it it can be 99 because 100 is not uh, uh, given uh, to that in that subject so so here you assume that student got 70 and to achieve 99 student has to reach this how how can he reach this uh actually his his goal is to get the 99 in his final exams okay and uh, before final exams consider that there are um, um three four mid mid exams okay three or two consider three three there are three mid exams so in the first mid exam if he obtain 70 then what uh, what does he know he knows that he has to somehow uh, study more in order to uh, get 99 okay so in the in the first first mid first mid he obtains 70 second mid what he does he does lot of revision and then a lot of work and then he uh, gets 80 so 80 now the third mid more he study more and more and gets perhaps 91 then what is what is happening here here there is an improvement okay actually it was 70 from 70 it has increased to 80 from 80 it has increased to 91 and this um pattern shows that further it can be increased to 99 because you see there is a increase of 10 10 10 11 therefore 
student is reaching in a proper direction and uh, following the right uh, path to reach the optimal marks okay optimal marks are this 19 more than beyond 99 he cannot get it so optimal is 99 uh, likewise in uh, deep neural networks you see this is the depiction of this this ball shaped curve where uh, there lies the optimal point you know mainly the optimal point lies here or here here like that there is an optimal point and the model knows what is the optimal point uh and model tries to reach there and while reaching while reaching model updates the weights and improves the performance and it uh, uh, apparently uh, from 70 to 80 implies that there is an improvement if from 70 model the next cycle achieves 60 it it it, it clearly shows that there is no improvement all right uh in this we will uh, study about the methods you know uh, for a student this improvement will be achieved by following different methods there is not a single method uh, some students will read during day some will read during night and some will mug up the things some some will uh, create some acronyms like uh, if there there are side headings first letter of every side heading they create acronyms the different methods are there to improve likewise there are different methods uh, in neural networks as well we have basically we have gradient descent okay gd we have stochastic gradient descent we have mini batch gradient descent these were the earlier uh, optimization methods but as the uh, field is advancing and uh, as the limitations and drawbacks of these methods are coming uh, into picture and uh, um, people and researchers and scientists were trying to understand they they came up with different other methods apart from these basic methods we have got different methods like adagrad ada delta rms prop adam nag these are the modern uh, uh, optimization methods these are the conventional optimization methods that's why the here the topic you can see it is newer optimization methods for neural networks to begin with the basic method which is a gradient descent it is the most basic and uh, most widely used optimization method until recently uh, since recent times these newer methods became prevalent and mainly um, researchers are using adam optimizer in most of their deep uh, neural networks and uh, the um, idea behind all these optimization methods has been uh, rooted into the mathematics mathematics which is calculus when you have this curve if you are here what is what happens is uh, apparently here uh, uh, this tangent function is uh, 
applied and we find the slope using time when we find the slope the idea here is wherever there is a slope we have to go down suppose if you are on a hill okay if you are on a hill you are standing here you want to go down in order to go down what do you do here consider that there is one more uh, uh, rock here you know a uh, one more hill uh, here mummy can the phone like king hi You are here. Your goal is to go down. Your goal is to go down, down the hill. So you start moving in this direction, in this direction, and not in this direction. Why you don't move in this direction? If you go this direction, you go upwards. What is your goal? Your goal is to go on the ground. You have to move here. like same uh, logic is applied here if you are here means if the model presently is staying at this position it finds the slope how it finds the slope using tan after finding the slope uh, then uh, it it picks a value Uh, which value learning rate? What what does le learning rate denote here? It denotes that uh, how now the uh, model understood that this is downwards. This is downwards. In downwards, how many steps to move further? That is determined by learning rate. Okay, learning rate. This learning rate determines how large or small your step is. Uh, if your learning rate is high, you may perhaps take a large step. Uh, take a large step. If your learning rate is small, you may you may uh, take a tiny step. The model takes tiny steps, only this much. Okay, this is very uh, important point to understand here. This is a very uh, important point because it. Uh, Like. determines how fast or slow you reaches this place if you take tiny steps it takes more time for you to reach here tiny 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 and then perhaps you reach here but it takes more time right if you take large steps look at here what happens here and then you are you know uh, bypassing this uh, optimal point and then you are coming to this point again from this point you have to go back because you have missed the point how you have missed the point due to this step this step is large because this step is large this point may be missed that's why uh coming up with a optimal learning rate 
learning rate is a hyperparameter. Uh, in order to determine the you know, good learning rate, it requires a lot of experiments. If uh, uh, you give the right learning rate, then you reach the optimal point faster and you don't miss it. And overall performance will improve. So this is this can be shown in this manner. It is from here it goes here, from here it goes here, from it get, here it goes here, and then it has to come back for large steps for small steps like this so it has reached okay these are tiny steps tiny means a small learning rate i mean to say here it is small learning rate this is large learning rate okay that learning rate there are uh, there is no standard notation for that uh, different authors uses different uh, symbols here it is alpha someone will use eta some other uh, authors use some other symbol here alpha determines the learning rate and here this uh, these are derivatives this is the derivative with respect to the loss these are the uh, old weights and you are coming to finding you are finding the new weights uh, weights weights also there is no standard notation for weights uh, you you can use w you can use a or you can use theta with different authors uses different uh, symbols all right so this is uh, uh, about gradient descent. Uh, one more point about uh, gradient descent is that it is first order optimization algorithm and which depends on the first order derivative. When you find the derivative, it, you find first order. There are few algorithms that are uh, dependent on second order derivative of a loss function. And this uh, gradient descent is used to calculate the weights uh, and uh, alter the weights so that the function can reach the minima. What is the minima here? The optimal value. And through back propagation, the loss is transferred from one layer to another and the model's parameter, also known as weights, are modified depending on the loss. Whatever is your loss, depending on that, uh, eventually the goal is to minimize the loss the advantage of gradient descent is easy to compute easy to implement easy to understand what are the disadvantages it may trap at local minima what is local minima
you look at this curve what is global minimum minimum means towards the ground consider that this is hill this is our ground so which one is near to the ground this point is near to the ground how many total points are there which are near to ground this is one this is another and these are the three points okay and out of these three points this one is minimum because it is close to the ground this is known as global minimum these two are known as local minimum because this is the minimum with respect to this point with respect to this point and this point this one is minimum and this one is minimum with respect to this point and this point and among all the points this is the minimum in gradient descent if uh, the model is here what the model does is reaches the minimum value this one this one and assumes that this is the uh, optimal value and stops whereas this is not the optimal value where is the optimal value further it has the model has to go up and then down and then it, model reaches the final value which is the uh, global minimum among all the points gradient descent stop here gradient descent does not uh, try to look for global minimum and uh, may get trapped at local minimum and essentially stops here and returns this point this point returning means what it is giving the uh, you know the least value which uh, gradient descent assumed to be the least one Okay, uh, this one is very important point global minimum and local minimum and then uh, weights are changed after calculating gradient on the whole data set this point we already studied but uh, let me tell you again if there are 1000 samples in our data set uh, each sample has to go through this forward pass and then after all thousand samples come finishes uh, the for, uh, forward pass then the uh, back propagation begins and weights are changed means this uh, back propagation uh, it gets executed after the entire data set is uh, you know, uh, feed it into the network. And due to this, it, it would take long time to converge. Converge means what? Converge means once you reach the minimum point, further you don't get any other minimum point. And you may uh, try to improve the values which will not get improved as there is no better value than this value. For that reason, when model reaches this point, it is said to be uh, in converged state. It, it has converged. It is said that model has converged. All right. And uh, because uh, this weights are updated for the entire data set at once, it, uh, it requires large memory to calculate the gradient on the whole data set. Okay.
Stochastic gradient descent. It is a variant of gradient descent. And it tries to update the model's parameters more frequently. What we have understood here, it updates the model parameters, which are weights, at once for the whole data set. The disadvantage of this is, it takes too long to converge and requires large memory. It updates parameters more frequently. And model parameters are altered after computation of loss on each training uh, example. After each training example, if there are 1000 training examples, after every training example, uh, computations take place. Okay, here it is mentioned that if the data set contains 1000 rows, SGD will update the model parameters 1000 times in one cycle. Here, if you note the difference, look at here, this is loss with respect to uh, the whole data set. This is the loss with respect to each training sample where I denotes the values from 1 to n where n is the total number of training samples. All right. So for every for every set, uh, data uh, element in the data set, this updates uh, computation of this update uh, takes place. What, what are the advantages? Frequent updates of model parameters happens in uh, stochastic gradient descent and hence it converges in less time. And it requires less memory and there is no need to store the values of loss functions. And also it can... Uh, come up with a new minima. The disadvantage is that it results in high variance and it may shoot even after achieving the global minima. And it gets, uh, okay, let me explain you. What happens? This is our global minimum. Assume this is global minimum. Sometimes it may happen that it may shoot. Okay. Actually, this is not overshoot. This is shoot. So it is. Even after reaching this point, it may move further. Okay. That is, uh, even after achieving the global minima, it goes further to find whether uh, another optima exists. And high variance, variance means, if you remember, when you have a good value for, uh, good performance on training samples and uh, poor performance on test, testing samples. Look at this, this is more. This is known as high variance. To get the same convergence, 
as gradient descent needs to slowly reduce the value of learning rate. Gradient descent uh, uh, converges. Okay, and then uh, uh, this uh, in order to in order to uh, reach the converge same convergence as gradient descent. Uh, the learning rate has to be reduced in this stochastic gradient descent. Uh, coming to the next uh, method, which is mini batch gradient descent. Mini batch gradient descent is obviously a variation of gradient descent. And it improves on uh, stochastic gradient descent and standard gradient descent. It, this version is better than both the original gradient descent and the SGD, stochastic gradient descent. In what way? It updates the model parameters after every batch. What original gradient descent does? After every, oh, not uh, K, thousand. After thousand samples, if there are thousand in the data set, weight updates happen, updates. And then for SGD, after every one, two, three, and so on, after every, you know, cycle of uh, one uh, uh, element, one uh, sample, updates happen. What does mini batch do? Mini batch essentially groups these 1000 samples into, uh, uh, actually divides. It splits up. It splits up this 1,000 samples into batches. If you create uh, uh, 10 batches of 100 samples each, then the updates takes place after every batch. 10th batch, 100th batch, then 200, then 300, and so on up to 1,000 updates. Yeah, you, you just observe here. These are our old weights. This is our learning rate. This is the derivatives. Derivative with respect to the loss function, where here you find the bi denotes the batches. Fantastic. Okay, i ith batch. 100, 1 to 100 is first batch. Nice. So i will be 1. And totally I 1 to 10. Amazing. Okay. Oh. And then uh, advantages frequently updates the model parameters and also has less variance. It's not too frequent and it's not, uh, you know, it's actually then uh, optimally. Therefore, you uh, the model uh, has less variance, and it requires medium amount of memory. This requires high original GD, and uh, SGD requires low, and MB GD. MB GD requires medium amount. So uh, all types of gradient descents have some challenges. All types include, there are three, right? GD, HGD, MBGD. All three have the challenges. What are the challenges? Choosing an optimal value of the learning rate. Learning rate has to be chosen. That is uh, alpha. If alpha is 0 0.001, then it is small it is 0 
zero one, or it can be zero point one. So you see, uh, you know, typically uh, it, it it will be zero point zero zero one. You can go for zero point zero 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 one. It's too small. Like the different uh, uh, learning rates have different, uh, you know. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Okay, so uh, all the three have challenges which include setting of a learning rate. If it is too small, it takes ages to convert. So much time, lot of time. And having a constant learning rate for all the parameters, there may be some parameters which may want to change at the same rate. If you have a same uh, learning rate, it is same throughout. Sometimes it is uh, efficient to have different learning rates for the same uh, model. And uh, all the three may get trapped in local minima. To overcome these uh, challenges, newer versions of optimization methods uh, have been proposed that we will look at tomorrow. From momentum, we will look at tomorrow. Okay? So, bye-bye.